Hey everyone, Adam here, So Wizard Podcast. Before we dive into today's video, please remember to subscribe to our channel. It really helps us grow our audience. We've been bringing you guys a lot of awesome content. Today we have another interview for you. I got to sit down with actor, writer-director Mark O'Brien to talk about the new movie that he acted in, Parallel, which is coming out via Aero Media on uh, select-run theaters for whatever's still open, I'm not even sure at this point, and VOD, which is how I'll be watching it. Um, the movie looks really cool. It's a parallel universe thing with a bit of a horror bent to it. I'll post a link to the trailer in the comments. It's definitely worth checking out. It looks really awesome. It kind of reminds me of something Blumhouse has been doing, but like the good side, because Blumhouse seems pretty 50-50. Looks cool. Uh, I hate to do the Twilight Zone comparison that everyone does, but it kind of does give me that vibe, which is kind of my go-to on sci-fi, horror, morality tales kind of deal. Anyway, Mark O'Brien, super nice guy. It was a really interesting conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey everybody, Adam here, So Wizard Podcast. I'm sitting down with Mark O'Brien, who has a movie coming out December 11th called Parallel. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for asking. And uh, thanks again for coming on. We appreciate it. Of course. Um, I got to see the trailer. It's really cool. But before we get into that, I always like to start at the beginning. Like, how did you get into acting? Oh, wow. Um, well, I have three older sisters who were always kind of running around the house singing and uh, sort of uh, showing that they were interested in, in acting. I had no interest in the arts whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, I, was, uh, I played hockey, and that's all I really wanted to do was just play hockey and, uh, and other sports. And then I guess uh, the year 1999 came along where it was like all those great movies came out. It was Fight Club, Magnolia, Matrix, Three Kings. There's so many great movies in 99. And I just was like, wow, I, wanna, I wanted to make movies. And, uh, and then I was in high school. So then I started, I started on the improv team. And then I, you know, it's grew around with my friends. We'd make movies on the weekends, like using our parents' camcorders. And then just one thing led to another, man. And it's like, I, I hosted a kid's show for a couple of years. Like I did a lot of theater and you just, at that point, you're just like, I'll just do whatever the hell I can do. Right. Because it's such a hard business to get into. No one's just going to be like, oh, you seem like a nice guy. Here's a lead in the movie. Right. So it takes, uh, it takes a lot of kind of finding your way. Uh, but that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah. Very cool. And when you started, was it all up in Canada? Were you still in uh, Newfoundland then or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't leave Newfoundland until I was 23, so all of that was in Newfoundland. Newfoundland is a very um, tight artistic community, and, and everybody there is kind of involved in, in the arts in one form or another. So there's a lot of support, and there's a lot of wearing multiple hats and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, I just was like, I, I did. I remember at one point I was at, because I went to university as well, I studied English and, uh, and classics. And so I remember I was in university, I was working at the library at the university, I was hosting a kid's show for CBC, which is a, like a, a, the NBC, ABC of Canada, basically. And um, I was hosting a kid's show on that, and I was doing a play, and I was also doing a full course load. So I just kind of went off. I was like, anything I can do. And I remember I'd get up at like 6.30, and I wouldn't go to bed till like midnight because I was working on so many things. I mean, it was all mostly for free, but like, <laughs> right. that's what it was like. But Newfoundland was great like that, man, because it was just a, a breeding ground of, of people just trying to do stuff. And, and, you know, there's not as many people. You're not in Hollywood hustling with like, you know, literally a million other guys. who look Right. Like so I, I was given some freedom and some support and um, it, it, it was tough. It's tough. It's really tough to get started. It was brutal, to be honest. <laughs> but, but that's where you learn it all. That's where you learn your foundation and everything. So... So from doing all those things and from, and from learning so much about myself, including studying something that wasn't film, you, you, I kind of created a nice broad um, uh, foundation for, for realizing the things I liked, and then I became pretty particular on the things I did like. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point too, because you didn't study film or screenwriting necessarily. Did you go into that as like a plan B or did, or is it just an interest or did you think like this is similar enough that I could adapt? Uh, a bit of all of those uh, in the sense that there was no film school in Newfoundland. Um, I applied to film schools in Toronto, like Ryerson, York University have good film programs and I didn't get in and uh, I didn't really want to apply for acting. I kind of always had this kind of uh, natural instinct that acting is um, something you have to learn by doing personally. Like I was never, I, I never felt like I could be taught it. I felt like I had to teach myself it. Mm -hmm. um, so 
so then, yeah, I, I liked reading a lot and, and I've always liked, you know, the art of story. So I, I liked English literature a lot. So I was just like, why don't I just study that? I was, I was actually hugely interested. Um, and, uh, and classics, I just always liked Greek and, and, and Roman history and a lot of philosophy too. So, so those were just interests I had that I got to explore that I still like, you know, I, I'm still an avid reader or like that. That informs probably what I do as an artist. But it, it was mostly just my interest level. No, oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Good, good you get to pursue that and still pursue your other creative interests. Yeah, I was really fortunate because because I was able to do yeah, both kind of on the side. And and then I was doing a TV show there. And and I remember even the, the professor, my professor was like, I was finishing my degree and and I had two courses left to do. And uh, and I was shooting a TV show. And I remember they actually let me like do my exam a separate time, my final exam, because I was like, I might be shooting. I told them at the beginning of the semester, I was like, guys, I don't know, like if it was a TV show, like I might not be available. And they were like, fine, you, if it falls on a day of the exam, you can come to our, my office and you can just write the exam there. And so, you know, it's um, a lot of people kind of let me off with a few probably too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. You didn't have to pick and choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, and I also see that you've been, writing directing at least a little bit so did that help with having your classic literature degree did it help with your writing and getting into that side absolutely like i had this theory too that you know how we all say like especially people uh, around our age are always like oh i didn't learn anything in school but mm -hmm. i'm like well it's really hard to go back and actually like <laughs> like like scientifically experiment what you did and did not learn because you, sometimes you're not aware of things you learned you don't know where you right. make that up so I, I'm actually a, a big fan of uh, like uh, academia and stuff because I, I do think you learn things, you learn the things you don't like. It's almost like a bad relationship. <laughs> You're like, well, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think I, I, I learned a lot about story that I didn't realize till later that I probably learned it earlier because there's just certain basics. Um, and, and to be honest, the most basic thing, I find this fascinating as someone who reads a million scripts and writes a lot too. Um, is that, and, and this is what I learned when I first started studying uh, literature, it was like, just get on with the story. <laughs> it's a fascinating <laughs> thing. Then you'll still read the script and be like, yeah, anyway, just like get on with it. Like, let's yeah. just keep moving. And I know that sounds so basic and, and rudimentary, but it, it is. And, and it's something that most notes I have on a script that, I, I, including my own, or it's like, oh, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what I learned uh, in university was is, is monumentally helpful in what I do today, even as an actor, because you're still telling a story. You still, you know, you realize how you got to push something forward and, and what to hold back and what to give and all that kind of stuff. It, it all informs. That's really cool. I like that it all comes together yeah. and ties together like that. Yeah. And from the people I've been talking to, you know, like yourself, who's a writer, actor, uh, creator, it really all goes hand in hand. It seems yeah. rare that someone is like, no, I am a writer. I have no idea how actors do it. I have no idea how the guy behind the camera, like, it seems like you need to know at least a little bit of all of it. Yeah, I think, I think there, there, I agree with you completely. I think there are certain cases where it's just like, wow, that person is just like a fantastic, one of my favorite directors is this director, Anthony Mann, who made a lot of, particularly Westerns with Jimmy Stewart in the 50s and 60s. And he never wrote anything or produced anything. He was just a director. And I'm like, how did this, and Fritz Lang is another one, a famous, the famous German uh, filmmaker who came over to Hollywood in the 30s, 40s. It's like, they weren't writers. And I'm like, how were you so good and, and in depth with what you're doing and, and just come on as a director? I find that actually almost more impressive than people who write and direct. But I do agree. I do think that the, the, you're, the, you're most likely to have success, I think, when you understand the people you're working with, their point of view on how they're going at their work. Um, I think that that's really helpful if you understand what the DP needs from the actor. Mm -hmm. um, like you pick up on conversation and, and, and when you're on set. And I think the same thing as a writer. It's like you can't just write something that's not going to be clear to the director. Like be clear, be specific um, about what it is that they're going to have to hit hard when they're on the day directing the movie. And the same thing with the director. You can't just take the script and just completely change it without, uh, I think, consulting. So it all goes hand in hand. It, it has to. It's almost like building a house. You can't be like, I'm really good at, at hammering nails, but the rest of it, I don't have a first like, <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to understand, like, well, I got to understand insulation and the electrical and the foundation work. Like, yeah, you, you kind of have one to thing. understand all of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So when you're 
writing or as a writer reading a script, do you find you fall into um, like, oh, this dialogue reads really well. Like you're reading it in your head at home and it sounds amazing. And then the next day you go to say it out loud and it's like, nobody talks this way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think I've gotten to the point just from experience of, of, for me, realizing when I don't think it's good, I realize it when I first read it. Okay. But uh, it's, it's, it's a funny thing because one of the best exercises that I think an actor can have is, um, is performing bad dialogue. Because if you can perform bad dialogue, man, when the good dialogue comes, it's, it's almost <laughs> like, you know, the batter warms up with two bats. All right. And then he has one bat when okay. he actually steps to the plate. It's like that. It's like, oh, yeah, this is so much easier. Now I can just say the stuff. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think bad writing jumps out at you really fast. But I will say this. It's a crutch, I think, sometimes for some actors. I, I hear this a lot where they're like, oh, it's so bad. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, well, it's your job to make it good. you got to make bad writing good sometimes. Because even great writers have a poorly written scene. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've seen it. And I've been there. And, and I've heard of it from, uh, from friends and stuff, too. And it's like, yeah, but that's your job. Like, that's, you got to figure it out. And there are great movies with poorly written scenes within them. Oh, for sure. That you and I both, I'm sure, love that movie. And you're like, yeah. oh, that, was, that was terrible. What the yeah. hell was that? Like, yeah, where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's awesome your job, too, you know. That's a really good way and a nice way of looking at it that, you know, someone like me who's on the outside looking in might not have that perspective. If I hear a bad line, I'm like, oh, it's a bad line. How do they do that? But it's, of course, like it's, it might not be just a bad line or it might yeah. be, but the person didn't know what to do. Like, I, I like all the angles you came at from there. Exactly. Like, there are certain actors, like, like Christian Bale, he could say anything, and I'm sure he can make good jokes. Sam Rockwell, I'm sure, has said some bad dialogue before. And mm. I don't know that I've ever seen Sam Rockwell not be amazing. So, you know what I mean? Like, you, you learn to work with it. And, uh, and I, I think the responsibility does fall on the actor. Not completely, but, but definitely a certain amount of it. Yeah, that's that's a nice outlook without giving writers a pass to just throw down whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any writers listening, like still, you know, still at it. Good shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I looked at your IMDb page and it looks like you are incredibly busy and really prolific. I mean, tons of projects every year. Is that just part of the grind? Like, I I can't stop or I won't, or are you just hitting it exactly right? Um, I think it's, I think it's, um, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rejections and disappointments uh, mixed in there as well, uh, particularly the last nine months. However, um, I think, I think it's a matter of um, when I, when I, I, I'm actually very, very picky, very particular about what I do. But when something comes along that I think is, is really good. Um, I think, I, I think it's normally because you have a likeness with that filmmaker or with that script. I'm not going to like something that's so outside the realm of who I am or what I can do. So I think the reason why that happens sometimes where you might get a lot of work or you work with really the people you really admire is because you admire them because there's something in them that you like as well. Like you guys have the same taste. So therefore you're able to um, kind of give them what they need in their ballpark. If that makes any sense at all. Like for example, I I've never auditioned for Tarantino, but using a, a big example of like Tarantino, if you've seen his movies, you understand there's a certain kind of way he probably likes it, or the Coen brothers. Mm -hmm. There's a certain type, there's a certain thing. So I think if you have a, a unique understanding with that kind of thing, which I'm a film buff, so I watch everything. So a lot of the things I'm like, oh, I kind of get their vibe or their general tone, this filmmaker. Um, then I think you can kind of fall in line with what they're looking for. And then it takes a lot of luck as well. But I, I think that's how I've been so fortunate to be in, in, in some really great projects. That's awesome. Is there anything, because you said there's nothing like outside your, I don't want to say comfort zone, because it's not exactly what you said, um, but kind of a stretch. Is there anything that you would want to stretch for? Like you mentioned, you're really into uh, Greek and Roman history. If they offered you some like insane sword and sandals thing, would you be like, oh, I've never done that. I'm all over it. 100%, 100%. I think there's some things you have to, you have to, I, I think, uh, certain sandals, I love that expression. Um, <laughs> I think there are certain, I love those movies though, like, oh, those, for sure. like you know, Ben Hur, <laughs> Fall of the Roman Empire, all those movies. Yeah. But um, I think there are certain things that, yeah, this sounds like I'm being precious, but I, I'm really not. Where I'm like, if I'm in that, it's not going to be right. Like the movie's not going to be right. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be weird. And, and it's, it's also me being selfish too, because I'm like, oh, I'm going to look bad in that. However, I, I do think that it's like, 
there's certain things you're just like, I'm just not the guy. I'm just not. I just am not. I kind of would like to do it, but I'm not. But then there are things like like using like some sort of epic sword and sandal kind of thing where you're like, I'm not quite, but I could be. And that challenge is interesting to me. Like I like it. I like the idea of going in something and being like, I don't really know what I'm going to do mm -hmm. with this role. I'm not completely sure. And I think that's that's kind of like juice in a way. Like I don't really know I'm going to handle it. Uh, and I love that stuff. I love that. So yeah, but it has to be right. I don't want to like disservice the thing too. Right. I'm like way off base of what I should be. So it sounds like a, a tightrope walk where it's like, if I fall over here, it's too much. Over here is too safe. So I got to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Like for example, like a great example is, you know, True Romance. Mm -hmm. the, so Gary Oldman in that, right? And he plays the drug dealer, Drexel. And, uh, and he's so good in it. He's amazing because so, he's got the dreadlocks. It's not Gary Oldman, like British Royal Shakespearean actor. Right, yeah. Gary all. Oldman disappears into things. Exactly. However, if he was the lead, if that character was the lead of that movie, I don't think it would work. Because I think <laughs> the whole time you're just like, that's Gary Oldman. Like, it would just wouldn't work. Yeah. It worked in a small role. Like, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's like, hmm, that might kind of fall pretty flat if Gary Oldman's in every scene like, yo, what's up? Like, it's just like, ah, uh, I don't know, I'm not buying it. Yeah, not buying it. <laughs> that's a so less is more scenario. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance. That's very cool. All right. Um, so coming up to Parallel, how did that come about? Uh, I, was, I was sent the script and, um, and two of the director Isaac Esban's uh, other films and I just thought it was, he was a great talent. I was like, he didn't write Parallel, but still I was like, I could see how this is in his realm. And I really respected the company Braun. I think they're a really great production company. So all the elements just kind of made sense. I was like, after watching his other films, The Similars and The Incident, I was like, oh man, this guy is like an interesting voice. He's willing to take risks. Like, and that's what I look for in a filmmaker that I'm like, he's not gonna be just like, you know, cut and paste. And, uh, and the script was also, like I was saying about story earlier, it was just like, it was entertaining, it was interesting. And it was also like, it went deep, but it didn't like harbor on that too much. It also provided entertainment as well, where it's the kind of movie you just sit down and you're like, I just gotta keep watching. I just actually just really wanna know what's gonna happen. And I think that that's a fine balance, especially with sci-fi. And this is like a high concept, but really palatable at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I thought it just found this cool, really interesting road um, that you don't always get with a script and filmmaker. It just seemed like a really cool pairing. Is that uh, one that you read and you said, I know this character, I know who this guy is, I know what to do? Or was that what you were just talking about where it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I want to find out? Yeah, it was a little because in the in the movie, I, I kind of, because we go into parallel universes, so you kinda, I kind of play a, uh, two versions of, of the same character. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So one one character I kind of understood a bit more uh, than the other. So it was that kind of uh, balance where you're like, I have to be, it's a, he, he's slightly changed, but ever so slightly, as if, you know, the sliding doors idea. Like, you know what I mean? He's just ever so different because maybe one, like, or the butterfly effect, when it's like one little thing is different in this guy's life, but he's the same person. And that was the challenge I liked. I was like, well, I've never done that before. I don't know if I'll ever do that again. So, uh, yeah, sure. Very cool. Yeah, I, I love those. Um multiverse parallel universe kind of story so i'm really looking forward to this yeah um, it's fascinating was it tough to kind of be the same guy but not like in your headspace yeah a little yeah a little i think it was um but but i think um scott the writer did a, a good job of it it being well informed of how he's slightly different uh, when you see the film you'll see it's like the plot takes you to a place that you're like oh this guy's in a different situation. So it actually kind of worked nicely in that way, but it, it definitely was a challenge because you don't want to, it's, it's just, it's, it's that fine balance of like, we're not going too far. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, so that was kind of the thing. And I think they, Isaac did a good job of finding that. We found that together and then the editing as well that, um, that I, I think it worked in the end, but yeah, it was a challenge for sure. That's really cool. It, it does look really interesting for people who are listening. Um, I'll post up the trailer along with this interview. Um, I wish I had a chance to watch it before we're talking because I'm sure I'd have a million more questions, especially given <laughs> yeah. the subject matter. Are, are you drawn to that kind of genre more than others or was it just the script sounded good and you wanted to work with the director? Um, I wasn't, at, at the time of filming, I wasn't particularly, draw, I'd done some sci-fi, I did a, a, a rival, and I did a movie called Anon, that was sci-fi. And, and then I started to sort of get into it a bit more and same with horror because this movie has a slight horror elements as well that I was like, I, I've kind of 
become more interested in those genres. I think mostly because they're, they're set in worlds where you know something bad's gonna happen, but you don't know when or how. So it really locks in the, the viewer and the audience, which other genres don't always necessarily do. Some dramas are so great, or comedies are so great. Comedy is really tough, but let's just say a drama, like it, it's so good, but it, if it doesn't speak to you, then you might just lose it as a viewer. You might just like, you know, fade off and not even really that care anymore. And you're kind of just watching the rest of it, not really being so invested. Whereas like, I do think sci-fi and horror, if they're good, they have that ability to really lock you in. And uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of veering into that direction more and more, so, particularly as a writer. I, I really, it's, it's more of a fun uh, time writing something like that. Yeah, you, you kind of, the, your imagination's the limit. You're not locked down to the reality. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And it's like, I always find, like, I remember, remember when Gravity came out and, uh, and everyone was like, well, like, you know, when they're in space and, and the, the, the meteor shower thing or whatever it was the, the hits them, they wouldn't fly this way. So I was like, who cares? George Clooney's also not an astronaut. Like, right. You know it's a movie. <laughs> there are, I, I don't think there have to be rules in, in movies, uh, because it, unless it's like you're making a World War II film, you, you want to stick pretty, the basic facts of it you want to stick to. Mm -hmm. But if we're making something that's not based in fact, who cares? Like, right. do whatever the hell you want. It's like, a movie you can well, stretch those limits. <laughs> exactly. Those actors aren't, aren't really the characters. So why right. does the, the house they be in have to be real too? It's like, I just believe that it's like your imagination should, should have no bounds when it comes to art. So that's why you've been writing in that realm a little bit more, you said? Yeah, I still think it's grounded in emotion that people can relate to, but but I, I like the idea that anything can happen. I, I just think that that's, that locks me in as a viewer and as a, a participant. Like, uh, I want to know how this is going to go because you're setting something up that, that yeah, what can occur is is limitless. I like that. And I also think it gives people an opportunity to in a weird way, relate to your character more, yeah. even though it's not something that's ever going to happen to you. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like in, you know, in Jurassic Park, there's no dinosaurs running around today, but like in Jurassic Park, you're like, oh no, Sam Neill, look out! Like, yeah. you, know I mean? like <laughs> you care more about him and Laura Dern, because you're like, oh, are they gonna, I don't want to get eaten by a dinosaur, that would be terrible. Like, so <laughs> it's, it, it does make you care about them more, because their stakes are even higher. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not watching someone else's life, you're experiencing something you've never seen. Exactly. And I just think that I don't want every movie to be like that, but I, I think when it's done right, it's, it's really like, look at Get Out. Get Out is like that. It's like, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if people doing what they were doing in that movie. I don't know that that's happening today, but, <laughs> but man, was I ever locked in. So yeah. I think that that's cool while also being grounded enough. Very cool. Um, how has, and I, in March, I was trying not to say the word because I'm sure everyone's just sick to death about talking about it. But at this point, how has COVID kind of made you have to pivot or maybe put up some barriers for you? Uh, it's certainly changed a lot. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I do love to work and uh, it's been tough to shoot. I mean, I was involved with several things that got pushed and well, canceled. And as, as most actor friends of mine, I mean, it's nice to see things are coming back around, but, but at the same time, I focus a lot on writing. Um, mm -hmm. I finished a feature that I wrote and directed and, and I saw in that, I don't know when it's going to come out, but we, it took a while because of COVID. Um, we were in post when COVID started, but it still took a while, even post, because everyone was unknown. Everything was unknown for the first three months or so. Right. Um, so I focused on that and I focused on writing a lot, which uh, now I'm enjoying writing a bit more instead of it being a slog. And also I have a three-year-old, so it was really nice to, to just be around her because I'm always traveling somewhere for work and, and to be home this much with her, it's it's time I'll never get back. And and you know, and I have a wife who's my best friend too. So yeah, I think we all kind of feel it. We're all all kind of burnt out. We're sick of it. But I still feel like we'll look back and be like, yeah, I needed that in a weird way. Yeah, so, the family time. Yeah. Yeah, you you need it. I mean, look, I'm not gonna say that there aren't days that I'm like, oh my god, I can't do this. <laughs> but I, you gotta embrace what's happening and. Uh, and and just find the good and and there there is plenty of good for sure for sure um well i appreciate you taking the time and i'm sure you have a million more uh interviews and promotionals and writing and everything to do um so do you want to tell everyone where they can find you and find your movie um well parallel is coming out uh in theaters 
I guess it'll be limited theaters uh, on December 11th. It also comes out on VOD that day. I'm not sure the exact download things, but I'm sure if you just look it up, people will find it. Uh, right. But it's December 11th. And, um, and I'm on Instagram at Mark O'Brien for real. And, uh, and I'm on Twitter, I think at Mark O'Brien NL. The NL is for Newfoundland where I'm from. All right. Very cool. Uh, Mark, thanks again. Good luck with everything. I'm really looking forward to the movie. Thanks so much, man. Nice chatting. Anytime. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Once again, Mark O'Brien in parallel, out December 11th, VOD, or check your local theaters if you are lucky enough to have local theaters at this point. It looks like it's going to be a pretty cool movie. Also, make sure you listen to So Was Your Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. So Was Your Podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows and more coming. Hint, hint. We love hearing feedback, so drop us a note in the comments or leave us something on social media. All of our things can be found after the show and in the show notes. And so is your podcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, videos, merchandise, and more. Thanks again.